he is, I think, related to the last several presentations, not the least of which, obviously, is um, the Hudson Yards presentation, as well as kind of dealing with the idea of nature in New York City and um, the power of nature in New York City and how it can take over something that's so fiercely industrial like the High Line. Oh, is he here? Yes, you're right over there. Uh, he's the Director of Design and um, Development at close enough, <laughs> at the Friends of the High Line, and where he started out as a volunteer in 2000. Uh, so if that's not a testament for what uh, volunteering for an organization can do, I don't know what it is. Come on. Thanks. Thanks. Um, yeah, you definitely caught between the sacred and the profane there, between Eric Sanderson and Michael Samwellian. Um, so, uh, and it really, I, I think we're at a real renaissance, by the way. I mean, this is amazing. This is amazing. Um, and we should really be doing the most of it, which is why we're here. So it's great. All right, so, um, I, I'm, I was told, don't do the Genesis story of the High Line. So I'm not doing that. Um, we finished section one, section two this past June, um, which doubled the length of the High Line um, from Gan up to Gansport, between Gansport and 30th Street, so we're now a mile long. And I wanted to just take a step back, to really sort of reflect on how we got there. Um, go back to the beginning, this is a Joel Sternfeld photograph um, at the rail yards, in fact. Um, and this is, this is what we started with, uh, the idea of this sub zone landscape that had reclaimed infrastructure. There's a lot of different reactions to that. This is one of my favorites, which is basically do nothing. You will ruin it. Um, we didn't do that. Um, because as Alex says, you have to, you have to accept change um, to go forward. But it, I, I think it's, it's important to sort of reflect on, on you know, what it is now and where we started. This was the original diagram, and, and I have to give all the credit here to our design team, which is not me, but which is uh, James Corner Field Operations and Dillard's Cafidio and Renfro, because they came up, with, they recognized that the High Line would have to change, and then they tried to figure out how to take all of the intrinsic beauty of it and bring it into the future. Um, this is one of my favorite diagrams, which is the, the post-apocalyptic, the mandatory post-apocalyptic rendering um, in, the, in the style of Super Studio of the forlorn orphans enjoying themselves on the High Line um, sometime in the future. That was from the competition in 2004. But again, I think it, it, it crystallized this, this idea of, of nature and industry coexisting together in some kind of new urban landscape um, with an innovative different form, something that had to be different from what we understand in, in typically, and try to under, figure out what could come out of that, um, what could be created um, in the juxtaposition of, of the landscape. So um, what's, what's interesting is that so they, they took this basic diagram of combining the hard and the soft and laid it out on the, on the high line now for a mile. Um, and it spawned a whole series of, of uses, the first being the promenade, um, which is as a, as something in, in New York we do all the time. We walk on the sidewalk, that's what we do, we walk, but we don't really walk. Um, so that was new. Uh, I think also the, the Highland was a, was a way of engaging the city and a lens with which to see the city in a new way. Um, this is just a composite shot of, of the High Line as it moves, it cuts its way through the city and really is this autonomous object sort of cutting its way. It provides for a whole series of moments of different scales. Um, this is the, from the most intimate. And again, these juxtapositions of, of commerce and nature, um, of the solitary and, and the communal, you know, this is what being in the city is all about. And the High Line sort of condenses that into a single experience. Um, this is the romance of watching traffic. the power of silence. <laughs> 20 seconds is a long time. Okay, uh, then at the same point, you know, the, the, there's the power of, of communal activities and celebrations and, and events. Um, this is in the same place that that last slide was taken from. So the idea of creating spaces that are not specifically programmed in their design, but can accept a variety of different programs over time, over seasons, um, and then become a kind of detonator for events that we didn't predict, right? Um, New York is filled with crazy creative people that do things like this, right? And we could never have thought of this, And but creating a space where this kind of thing can happen um, is what the Highline is all about, right? 
Um, this is my favorite, actually, which is not even happening on the Highland itself. This is the Renegade Cabaret, um, basically a neighbor who was tired of having lights from the High Line shining into her window, decided that, well, I'm in the lights, I'm going to put on a show. And so she started this cabaret act, and all of a sudden you have people on the High Line basically lined up for two blocks watching this, 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 this performance spontaneously every, every weekend. And then thinking about how can the identity of the High Line and the activities that are happening on it and the new kind of public space that's created, how can that expand beyond the High Line itself? This is a temporary installation we did this past summer. Um, this is not the Campidoglio in Rome, um, although it is a, ice, a, a roller skating rink, and then creating a beer garden underneath the High Line. And again, I think this is one of the, one of the themes of this whole night is about how do we reclaim um, spaces that were not were sort of left and, and disregarded and reclaim them for public use in a productive way. So now. We finished section two, we're on to section three. This is where Michael comes in. Um, section three is uh, around the Hudson Yards, uh, the West Side Rail Yards. It represents a whole one third of the High Line, essentially a big part of the High Line um, that remains to be completed. That little tag on the right is what we call the spur that comes back out to, 